Well, mm -hmm. thank you very much, uh, Gerlinda. So we're all set. So hopefully you can hear me today. Good. So uh, this is all about the MISS mechanics and management of working from home. And uh, so I'm sharing this with you because many of you are working from home, so you're going to experience this yourselves. But also, too, as we think about our workplaces, uh, we are also seeing dramatic changes. And I liken this, uh, this is as great a change as when we first introduced computers into the workplace. Uh, things are changing so fast, and it's important for us to be able to manage this and understand what's happened. And so what I want to talk about today is our challenges you know, what are the lessons we've learned within the last eight, nine weeks? What can we do better? And more importantly, how can we sustain and it be important that we maximize the potential here? Because clearly there are some risks as we go through this and as many of us may be feeling even today. So if I do a, a quick uh, pulse check, uh, some of the things we're seeing and I'm seeing from my clients is we're hearing about death by Zoom. So we've been Zoomed to death. Uh, I've got many people ask, can I just switch off the video? Uh, because we're getting overwhelmed with that. The other thing we've heard about is work never ends. Uh, the earlier presenter today talked about the fact that we go from bed to desk and, and bed to desk and, and so on. So we need to be conscious of that because we are having a wearing down of people. So there is a way to manage that. We will need to reset the expectations for working from home or working from anywhere out of the office uh, because clearly this, is, this has been a, a seismic change. And so people will expect to have that option, but the challenge is we're now gonna have companies with mixed cultures where some people are at home, some are at the office. How do we manage that? And on the positive side, lots of people have told me they really don't miss the commute. They don't miss the 401 or the 407. So there are some positive aspects to this uh, as we go through this. So that's just a quick pulse check on how we're feeling about this. So there's uh, kind of five myths I want to talk about today. So myth number one is that people are less productive when they work from home. Uh, that is not the case. In many cases, people are more productive. But the challenge is there are things that will erode productivity. And I'll talk about those later on. Myth number two, people enjoy video chats. Well, sometimes, and I think when we first started this, it was quite novel to see people talking, uh, to see inside the rooms. Um, you got to meet my, uh, my owl here. You know, so all kinds of things. Uh, people thought it was wonderful. Now we're getting exhausted. So again, we have to think about ways to keep people engaged. Third myth, it's easier to manage people because they're not in the office. Well, the actual fact is it's much more difficult to manage people when you can't see them, you can't touch them, and you can't connect. So we'll talk about how to engage people. We also thought with working from home, there'd be fewer interruptions. In other words, you don't have that annoying person who comes by your office and says, let's have a coffee, or they sit themselves down in your chair and you can't get rid of them. Uh, in fact, there are probably more interruptions at home, not only from the home, but also more intrusions into your workday uh, via uh, text messages of the computer. And here's one of my favorite ones. I assumed, uh, having had a career in HR where I've dealt with all kinds of harassment issues and interpersonal conflicts, I assumed there would be less in this new environment. I was wrong. There are still people sending nasty messages to each other or inappropriate comments. So again, we still have to be able to manage that part of our workplace. So what's missing in this workplace? Well, basically kind of two things. One is we don't have as much interaction. And so there's been a loss of trust. So people are not always trusting their fellow employees. Some managers aren't, aren't trusting their employees. So we have that trust issue that we need to find a way to reinforce. The other piece that's missing is the control. And the control is everything to the scheduling you do, to the way a manager manages his staff, he no longer he or she no longer has the ability to see them at work, to drop in, to check on them as regularly. It takes an extra effort. So between the trust and the control issues, we have to find a way to manage that smartly. So for today's agenda, we're going to talk about three things: uh, engagement, mechanics, and management. So if you Look at a high level, what do you need from your team? Or also to what do your clients need from their teams? And one point about this presentation is that you can share this 
knowledge with your clients because again, they are struggling with the same issues as anyone. So in terms of what people need from their, from their teams, they need three things. They need productivity, they need people to be delivering results, they need them to be committed uh, to do well for the organization. And ultimately you want your staff and yourselves as well to feel passionate about the work you do. So what does that translate to? That translates to engagement. So if you can continue to engage your staff or your clients during this time, this is, this is the key thing that you have to keep a focus on. The reason being is engagement is money. Engagement uh, indicates that, so if you have a highly engaged team, uh, your operating income is going to be 33% higher. You're going to grow faster. You're going to go higher. And one of the key factors is employees are 87% more likely to stay. And for those of you that have to hire people occasionally or frequently, uh, you know what a chore this is. Uh, and if you have to replace someone, you lose that knowledge and you have to reinvest a lot of energy. Typically, if you lose a staff member, uh, and they're making $60,000 a year, uh, I estimate you're going to lose $180,000 in productivity between the time you invest in recruiting them, the lost productivity, and the time that they make errors. Uh, there's a huge cost. So if you can keep people engaged and stay, that's going to be huge. The other thing that's very important is what I call the disengagement factor. So if you have employees who are just marginally getting by like, uh, like my friend here sleeping at his desk, um, that's gonna cost you roughly three, three, 34% of their salary in terms of lost productivity. So the challenge for each of us with our organizations and even ourselves is to make sure we have people that are fully engaged because disengaged employees are extremely costly and that's a hidden factor for most companies. So in short, engagement is really about three things. If you remember these three words and nothing else today, that's uh, you've done well. So you want uh, engagement means play. So the idea is you want your employees to play well as a team. So think about a high performance team playing well. They love coming into work. They love the work they do. Second thing, you want them to say. So you want them to say positive things about your company. You want them to tell their family members, their, their friends, buy from this company. And then finally, you want them to stay with the company because you want that longevity. So the amount that you've invested in their intellectual capital, you want to harvest that for the future. So let's talk about some of the mechanics to increase that engagement, particularly in this, in this challenging time. The first thing is, because we don't have that sense of control, you want to make sure that people cre create a steady rhythm with your team. So having regular staff meetings, having regular call-ins, having scheduled lunches, having scheduled activities, whether it's reporting, uh, you want to create that rhythm because that's the natural thing that's been lost from, the, from working uh, remotely. Secondly, you want them to have consistent engaging communications. So more than ever, every single word you send on uh, text or email or uh, through a same time chat, uh, you want that to be meaningful and you want it to be engaging because we're all seeing so much on the screens now, it's getting hard to keep focused. You also want to be sensitive to time and uh, management in terms of uh, making sure if you have remote teams working, uh, be sensitive to the hours they're working, uh, find ways to track that. And then finally, obviously you want to be all tracking hours and probably more importantly is tracking accountability because it is very clear people, people's jobs have changed, the nature of their work has changed. So being clear with them about what they're accountable for, whether it's so many units or calls or sales volumes, uh, having that clarity is really important for accountability right now. And the other thing as well, if you're setting goals for people, as people work from home, it's often better to have smaller objectives at this point in time than larger ones because it's easier to focus on smaller tasks. So as we continue on with mechanics, so something I've talked to my clients about is uh, they're expecting people to be 100% productive as they work from home right now. Whereas, in fact, we know we have many people who are dealing with children. Uh, they've got pets, they've got cats, they've got elderly parents, they've got people coming to the door. Uh, they've got other distractions. 
So what I'm telling my clients is expect about 80% efficiency from people working from home, just acknowledging the fact that people have home distractions now. Uh, this is an unusual climate. People are distracted. So just giving them a look, cut them a little bit of slack. I mean, that'll change once the kids go back to school, but for now, 80% is good. What you may be thinking about too uh, in your work practice now, or even as we go back to work, is creating hybrid work schedules. So it may be rotating people in and out the office. It may be having office workers working shifts, but uh, likely you're gonna see some changes there in terms of the work scheduling, which may be to your advantage in terms of servicing clients. The other thing is, as people are working from home or working alternate schedules, make sure people really understand when Mary or Fred or John is gonna be on the call or when they're gonna be available. So that's gonna be key. The final point I think is the most important one here. And that's the fact that we need to mandate what I call distraction free zones. So many companies I work with uh, that have designers or people that need to focus actually set aside an hour or maybe 90 minutes a day across the board when there is no internal chatter or communication. And this allows people to plan their most detailed uh, work during that time or the most difficult work. And it really allows focus. Uh, at the moment, we have so many different inputs coming into us. It's very easy to get distracted. And, and as we know, you know, multitasking is actually the enemy of productivity. So those are some of the mechanics to think about. The key thing is probably uh, is really around the communications. And I recommend companies think about whether it's a communication charter or rules and regulations. Uh, but in this day and age, we're going to have mixed offices. We're going to have some people at home, some in the office. Uh, we are going to have remote employees. So being very clear about how you communicate with people is going to be important. Equally as important is how do you escalate issues? Uh, for example, the, the other day I was on the phone with Rogers and it took the uh, rep I was working with an hour and a half to get through to her manager to escalate my issue. So making sure there's very clear uh, issue escalations. The other piece is uh, making sure you define your your etiquette for your business. Uh, do you want people smoking in their pajamas or whatever? So just to be clear on those rules. And again, this is all about clarity. It's making sure people understand the rules and the expectations because anytime in a work setting where you lack clarity, that's where you get start to get interpersonal conflict and lack of productivity. So communication charters, uh, and this can be a great exercise to work through with your team. So it can be as much as, you know, just what's the expected response time? If I send you an email, when does that get responded to? Uh, making sure your meetings are well run. Uh, understanding to email protocols. We're gonna be doing much more by email, by text. What's the protocol for that? Uh, you know, let's not have people sending, you know, reply all. We've seen that in the past. That's a, that's a personal favorite of mine. The other thing to think about as you're designing your communication charter is what's uh, this is called the channel richness scale. And basically it says that for different types of communications, you need to pick the right message. So for example, the most difficult conversations are face to face. So that's where you have a very tough issue. You need to pick up the phone, uh, call them directly. Whereas for example, you could have a, a, a detailed document. Uh, you're not gonna put that in a text message or a phone call you're gonna write that out. So making sure your people are using the right uh, richness channel to communicate is gonna be important. And again, it's a good time to discuss that with your staff, just to make sure that they feel positive that they're using the right tool. If we think about management, uh, so the challenge for management right now is how do you maintain your culture? Because suddenly your culture is diverse, it's spread out across, uh, could be across the Canada, could be across the world. And so it's important at this point to realize that culture is really defined by your values and your accepted behaviors. So this puts a real onus on management leadership to be defining and sharing those values and exhibiting the behaviors. So normally how you grow culture is, culture is built on a variety of things apart from values and behaviors, but it's also largely built on storytelling. You know, how we, how we tell people about our company is we tell stories about how we helped, uh, how we resold this, this product or how we gave that customer service. So these are some of the techniques that you're gonna need to think about and weaving those into your electronic communications or your electronic town halls. Uh, and it's gonna be particularly important at this point in time because there's a lot of lessons to be learned. 
So you need to be taking advantage of this uh, and making it meaningful and engaging for people because otherwise you're gonna start to lose that, that thread of culture, particularly as people are not spending as much time together. So we've heard some uh, comments earlier this morning in the first uh, presentation around building your culture, and we've seen some great examples already today, but it really takes some dedicated time to do this. It's something that managers need to set time aside to do. And whether it's virtual happy hours, uh, one, of my, one of my clients calls it having quarantinis, uh, but having a regular space, a regular time for this, for people to engage in discussions to get to know the team. And uh, one of my clients, we're doing this uh, every two weeks, and we actually, uh, we actually set it up like, uh, like a concert and we, or a TV show. And uh, we have people playing music, uh, sharing animals, sharing stories, uh, sharing scenes of their, uh, their cottage. So people learn more about themselves now uh, than they did before. So I think this is a great way because ultimately we want to engage people in that, in that human touch. The other point that's challenging during this time is when we have people working remotely is to manage performance. Again, you know, if that's not done properly, it's going to cause huge issues for the company. Uh, and it's easy to not manage it as a point in time because we're getting emails, we're getting traction from people, reports, but you need to be making sure you're, you're in constant touch with your people. Um, you know, if you see things that are not going right, uh, you need to act quickly because, you know, what is accepted or what is condoned becomes accepted and reinforced. So you want to make sure that you are managing following up with performance issues very, very quickly. You want to be available. You want people to know when they can reach out to you, uh, that they can reach out to you in confidence. Uh, you also want to be reaching out to them on a regular basis. And particularly for remote employees, you know, I encourage managers, don't be just phoning them when there's bad news. I mean, when they see the boss's number on the cell phone or whatever, you know, make sure that you're getting out there uh, and dealing with them on a positive basis and reinforcing it. You know, have your one-on-one -on -one discussions. Don't, don't let that slide. And if anything, it's more important now than ever. Um, also too, appreciation is huge right now. Uh, you know, we've lost the ability to uh, give someone a verbal pat on the back. Um, and so people do need encouragement. They do need more support than ever. Uh, we heard another gentleman talk about giving gift packages to their, to their clients. You can also give gifts, send gift packages to your staff as well. And that's particularly key right now as they're working from home, they got stressed. So if you send a package to their home, it's seen by not only them, but also their family. And to some extent, you also, you're also semi-employing their family right now because they're going to be in that workplace. So again, the more you can do to engage your staff with some recognition, some motivation is absolutely huge. And as part of managing performance, you also want to make sure you nurture what I call emergent leadership. So you want to encourage your staff to volunteer for things. Uh, you want to coach them. Uh, you want to make sure that they are growing through this because it's going to be harder to see development patterns for people unless you're really on top of this. So don't, don't lose those opportunities. So there's other some trends in management I'm seeing from an HR perspective. So uh, we have more people working from home now and uh, not everyone had a home office when we started this. And so some of your employees or your staff or your customers may be saying, well, shouldn't we reimburse people for working from home? Because they may have to buy office equipment or computer supplies. So uh, about 15% of companies in the area are now starting to do this as part of their HR policies. So 63% are providing reimbursement for software equipment, 30% uh, for internet, and about 20% are providing somewhere between $200 to $300 per month. Uh, personally, I think that's a bit high, but again, as you think about your policies for your staff and also how you recruit your staff, these may be emerging trends that people are gonna have to think about. The other thing that you may wanna consider as you're hiring staff is asking them about their remote office capabilities because it's gonna be important that people have the capacity to work from home as this evolves. And I think this will be a long-term trend. The other thing is too, um, for those of you that are familiar with the T2200, uh, that's a form that you can provide to employees that allows them a taxable write-off 
for their home office. So uh, you may wanna be uh, preemptive in providing them with that. Uh, maybe your employees are gonna provide you with that. Uh, but again, if there's a requirement to have a home office, uh, there is a tax break for that. So I encourage people to, uh, to take advantage of that. So in wrapping up here, uh, something I tell my clients is your staff have long memories. Uh, many of us will recall our first boss, will recall the first time we were yelled at or criticized, will remember a time when a, a company did something extraordinary for us. So this is a time to be thinking about that. So how you treat your staff now will be remembered both on the positive and negative side. And the challenge with working remotely is it will accentuate any cultural difference, any things that are going wrong in the company will be accentuated during this time. So again, you wanna make sure you're keeping on top of those best practices. As we have people working uh, out of direct eyesight, remember that engagement is money. Uh, it can be up to 30% more productivity. So finding ways to keep people engaged, uh, keeping yourself engaged, because again, you know, a final point here is be conscious of your role as a leader every day. Uh, so as much as we may be frustrated with the world, we may be anxious, uh, every, every text we send, every message we deliver is a mark of our leadership. So uh, don't ever forget that because it's something that people will look to us and this is a challenge time for our leaders. So in closing, I, I always encourage my clients to uh, make sure to know when to ask for help. And I think attending a conference like this is, is a great way to do that. And also keep learning because this is absolutely brand new for all of us. We've never been here before, so we're all learning. We're not gonna get it quite right. So this is an evolving process, but we owe it to ourselves to make sure that we do our absolute best on this. And I'll slip that slide. And then uh, I believe the slides are gonna be sent out to everyone later on. And this is just a, a quick graphic of my, uh, my presentation. But again, uh, you know, some key points, you know, it's about clarity. So providing clarity in the workplace for staff, uh, making sure people understand what's acceptable and what's not acceptable, and also making sure that you're managing performance well. So that's uh, where we are. We're just about out of time. Uh, and I guess the final point is just be authentic, be yourself. As I mentioned, you know, we don't have all the right answers. Uh, it's all right to recognize the fact that we don't know everything perfectly. And this is also a great time to reach out to our teams to get them engaged because uh, like ourselves, they may not have the answers, but they want to be listened to uh, and felt that you value them. So with that, I'd say if you need to keep in touch with me, uh, that's my contact information. 